So now let's just go ahead and get into talking about um, really using the power of this, which is with V motion. So as a guest migrates to another uh, host, all of its information, all of its traffic follows it. So if I do a show interface brief, I see specifically on my VETHs that I've got, let's say for instance, let's take one of the guests that we're going to be working with, uh, or actually let's take a look at all of them, V8, uh, VETH8, and then 13 and 14. We can see that they're my guests because they're on the VLAN 110. So show run interface VETH8. And then also show VE 13 through 14. Okay, so VE 8, if I scroll back up, is labeled as the description is the actual guest name, Win2K8 guest, network adapter one. It's got a particular distributed virtual port number, but it's always going to be VE 8. And VE13, which is guest 2, and VE14, which is guest 3, these are always going to be the same VE numbers. So in the same way, if I do a show uh, interface VE14, and I see that I've got 44 input and 70 output packets, and that's I'm running that command over and over, and it's staying the same, and then I switch over to my... Uh, command line here and I try to ping let's say dot one ten dot two oh three and I issue four pings I should see that it's increased roughly four pings and it actually went up I think it was 44 it went up five five pings or, or sorry five packets uh, and it was at 70 and it's now at 75 uh, but anyway so, you know, an additional packet came in there somewhere, but this is the, uh, this is the proper receive and transmit statistics, and they will stay with this. In the same way, uh, access control list, security, uh, not just at ACLs, but any other types of security, if I want to uh, bring in the ASA 1000V, uh, VWAS, if I want to bring in network analysis module, uh, or even the virtual security gateway, all of these virtual products from Cisco can be integrated with the Nexus 1000V using VPath. So VPath is going to uh, send the traffic over to the virtual services node, and a virtual services node is something like the VSG, the virtual security gateway, or the uh, ASA 1000V, or the NAM, or anything else, uh, VWAS, and it's going to then send that traffic back with the known uh, understanding of where it's allowed to talk to, uh, protect east-west traffic between my virtual machines, even on the same ESX host or between ESX hosts, but within the same virtual switch chassis. And it's going to be able to... Um, then allow all subsequent traffic from the VEM to that, you know, from guest to guest to not have to constantly go out through the virtual services node. So it does a lookup and then VPath keeps that information stateful in the distributed VEM module. So uh, at this point, what we can do is let's just do a few simple tests. Uh, we're not going to involve virtual uh virtual security gateway here today or ASA 1000V, but let's just go ahead and set up a basic, uh, let's set up an access list. So currently I've also enabled a web server on each of these uh, 2001 and I can get there no problem. We saw it wait for that very quickly. Uh, 2002, we saw it try to go out and contact it and it loads it very quickly, no problem and 2003. So I've got a web server running on each of them. I also have the ability to have a ping going. So let's just do a constant ping to 2003. So now we'll switch over and let's create a uh, simple access list. So let's deny HTTP to 2003, but we'll permit uh, ping. 
So let's just create an IP access list. We'll call it no HTTP. And we'll say, you know, something like deny TCP any any equaling uh, dub dub dub, but we'll permit uh, IP any any. And just for the sake of it, let's permit ICMP any any and permit IP any any. And then we'll go into the interface VETH and which VETH was it? Uh, 14. And we'll say IP. We actually have to say IP port access group, uh, no HTTP, and let's just say out. So we're not going to let it out to the web server so that the web server will never get that traffic. Okay. So we've gone ahead and done that. Show run. Pipe to begin with port profile. No, sorry. Uh, let's just do show run interface VE14. We see that access group is applied. So we're still able to ping that device, no problem. But if we try to go out and go to the web server, we can now see down here it's waiting and eventually it will time out. So we've blocked that traffic. Time out here, there we go. Web page is not available. Let's look at the other hosts. They're still perfectly available. They load very quickly, no problem. 201, 202, no problem with the web servers. 203, just sitting there, sending the request. That request will never make it to the web server. So the ACL is in effect. Like, and, and uh, let's see, should we go ahead and, let's go ahead and set up quality of service as well. And uh, then we'll go ahead and vMotion that host off. So let's set up, we're gonna create a class map, but before we do that, let's create an IP access list to match our traffic. So let's just call it ping or ICMP. And we'll say permit uh, ICMP any any. We'll just make it real simple. This would be a perfect place to do rate limiting of your individual VM guests. Remember, they have access to 10 or really 20 gigabit uh, because we have two traces swinging up to each IO module, 20 gigabit of ethernet, um, and every guest has equal access. So in our policy map that we're gonna create, let's do a class map. Uh, actually, we're gonna do a class map uh, QoS, or type QoS rather. That's what it defaults to anyway. And we'll do a match any, and we'll say ICMP. And let's say match uh, IP, uh, sorry, match access group and name ICMP. And from our policy map, we'll create for the type QoS, we'll say, uh, let's just call it set ICMP to the per hop behavior of AF13. That's what we'll do to it. And we'll say class. And of course here we could do class, class default. And then we could say something like police this traffic. And you can even spell out, you know, maybe I want to police something to uh, police it to three gigabits per second. And you know, what do you do with conform? We want to transmit, but if you violate, we want you to drop it. Uh, and then let's also say we're going to have class for ICMP that we just defined. And we're going to say, let's go ahead and set the DSCP to uh, AF13. Let's take a look at our configuration. So here's our interesting traffic and our class map and our policy map. We're policing all traffic to three gigabits. Uh, we didn't really set the B sub C or the committed burst. Um, so it did it in a value of milliseconds. We, you know, basically how much traffic can, uh, or, or really basically set the, the, almost the T sub C value from the B sub C. But uh, we could do this in bytes or megabytes or even gigabytes in terms of how, and, and of course the, 
uh, B sub C, or really the CIR, divided by the B sub C would give us the amount of time intervals uh, from which we can derive how much traffic will be put onto the wire every so many T sub C or time interval uh, iterations. Okay, but for ICMP, we're setting the DSCP to be 14. So let's go ahead and go to interface VE. Uh, it was 14, I believe, and we'll do service policy type QoS. And we'll say uh, we want to do an input. So uh, we want to mark traffic that's coming back in from the guest. So this should be ping replies. And we want to set that to our QoS policy here. Let's do a copy, run start. And so now if we fire up Wireshark, we should see I believe this is the interface that we're getting our traffic in from, but let's just do both of these just in case. And let's just do all of them. And we'll start this. And we're going to filter to ICMP. And so we should see that our echo replies Oops. Have, yep, assured forwarding 13 bits marked. And if we differentiate that with pings to, let's say, 202, because we're still doing pinging, let's start this back up. Still filtering on ICMP. I didn't do a continuous one. There we go. Now we can see that these echo replies have DSCP 00 because we never set anything. So we know that our uh, we know that our quality of service is in effect and show policy map interface VE14 should confirm that that we've matched a certain amount 58 packets and set the DSCP value and so far nothing has violated uh, 3 gigabit per second of traffic but we have limited this guest 3 okay and again show run interface VE14 is Win2K8 guest 3 network adapter. And of course, we can always see where that's pinned. With our Vem command. We can see that Guess 3 Ethernet is VE14, and it's pinned to uplink uh, subgroup ID 5, which is on uh, module 3, specifically to three, Ethernet 3.6. But that's about to change because we're going to do some vMotion. So let's bring up our ping. And let's do it with a constant ping. And we're going to go ahead and move this guest over. We'll just drag and drop it this time. And we should watch our ping go. See if we lose any pings. There we lost one ping and one ping only. We saw that the virtual Ethernet 14 was detached and then it was reattached, but this time instead of on module 3, on module 5. So 
if I do show interface VE14, I still see all of my same statistics. That hasn't changed. Show run interface VE14. I haven't lost my access group or my QoS. If I look at my Wireshark, I should now be seeing replies that have assured forwarding 13, so quality of service is still in effect. And let's try to go to my web page. That ACL is still not responding. Sending the request, but it's never going to get there. If I go over to any one of my other interfaces, they're able to go, no problem. They refresh almost immediately but this one is simply going to time out. It cannot get there. <clears throat> because my ACL is blocking it. So that's the beauty of Nexus 1000, is that at this point I have uh, everything able to be supported. Uh, v motion is occurring through the Nexus 1000 V. The VSMs are talking over their own VEMs through the Nexus 1000V, vCenter is on the Nexus 1000V, and all my guests are on the Nexus 1000V, and they're able to vMotion perfectly, quickly, no problems, no issues at all, extremely quick. They don't lose any of their statistics, they don't lose any of their quality of uh, service, anything like that. Now there is one caveat that I thought I would mention, Let's do show run interface VE14. Uh, so this is guest three. Watch what happens if I change the settings for guest three. And, and, and also keep in mind the server administrator, no control over this. Unless you gave him access to those port profiles, there's no control. Um, they All they have the ability to do is assign their guests to the individual uh, you know, port profiles that you're sa sending. And maybe you don't want them to be able to send information to, you know, maybe they're just a regular server administrator, but not your ESXi architect. Maybe you don't want them to be able to send information to VM kernel or VM motion or management interfaces or port groups in VMware. You actually have the ability to set up roles and permissions with Nexus 1000V for the port profiles so that the port groups are only ad, uh, only visible by certain people, certain administrators. So that makes it really nice as well. But again, all they can do is assign. So let's say I do change this. Uh, let's say I change it to a different interface altogether, a, a different distributed virtual switch port group. Now, obviously, VE14 is detached. And it's now up in mode access, but it's a it's part of a different interface. And actually, if I do notice, because it changed its port profile to V Motion, it lost its ACL and quality of service. So what happens if I change it back? It's down should be back up here. It does not retain that information if I change port profiles. So technically that is one way that your server administrators could cheat and basically get rid of quality of service that is limiting their bandwidth. Uh, but they would have to know about that first and that's kind of a dirty little secret. Uh, but that is one thing to keep in mind. So you don't want to change the port profile. Now it doesn't lose Actually, let's see, show interface VE14. It didn't lose its statistics, but it did lose its ACL and its QoS. So that's one thing to keep in mind.